What could this motif reveal about ancient Chinese? 早期的文明的模式呢是盲一体，这个是人类早期的一个共性。What could these grains tell us about life thousands of years ago? 这里呢，曾经也是世世代代五千年的文化，啊，五千年的稻谷都是在这后面。And how did these prehistoric people tame ferocious flies? 这种呢，后代在水利史上呢叫扫工技术。这种技术呢，实际上现在还用。About five thousand years ago, a Neolithic community. Inhabited the last lowlands of the Yangtze River Delta in East China, which is now Liangzhou. The community ruled the land for a thousand years. Its stories lay silent and buried for millennia. Until modern hands unearthed its secrets. It's late October, the busiest time of the year for Liang Yanming. Come on, come on, come on! Ah, can you come? Come on, come on, come on! Come on, come on, come on! For all his life, Liang has been growing rice, just like his ancestors millennia ago. My father told me, my my father told me, it's all grown rice. We put this rice now in the garden. This is also a culture of four thousand years old. Ah, five thousand years old rice is in the back. The rice is being grown in the back. We put it in the back. We put it in the back. We put it in the back. Known as the land of fish and rice. The Yangtze River Delta region has long been one of China's most prosperous. Moderate temperatures, rich soil, and adequate water resources. Nature blessed the region with favorable conditions. They laid the foundation for a great ancient civilization known to us as Liangzhu. 30 degrees north is a magical latitude. Thousands of years ago, the regions in this vicinity gave birth to the world's four great ancient civilizations. Egypt, Sumeria, Harappa, and China. The key to them all was a major river. In China, it was the mighty Yangtze. The ancient state of Liangzhou was located at its mouth. The Neolithic culture was named after the town where it was first discovered. The state was centered on the ancient city of Liangzhou. Its cultural influence extended across the Taihu Lake Basin, including what is today Shanghai, China's economic powerhouse. Liangzhou means the beautiful wetland. As the name suggested, the region was once riddled with canals. Five millennia ago, people chose here to build their homes on what is now the outskirts of Hangzhou. <laughs> Rice is a crop that's almost synonymous with China. The domesticated wild grass not only became a staple crop that would feed billions, but also shaped China's culture, environment, and social organization. As early as 10,000 years ago, people in China were already cultivating rice. The Shangshan site south of Liangzhou has yielded the earliest known remains of domesticated rice grains in the world. It was from there that rice cultivation gradually spread to the rest of China and beyond its borders. By the time of the Liangzhu state, the crop had been fully domesticated and become the economic base of the society. These 
These are charred grains of rice from 5,000 years ago. They were discovered close to the center of the capital of Liangzhou, in what is believed to be a granary. They are estimated to weigh about 200 metric tons. The discovery proves this community had enough food to sustain a large population. But how did they manage to produce such an abundance? Large areas of rice fields have been identified. One was at the Maoshan site in the far suburbs of the Liangzhu ancient city. More than six hectares show an orderly layout, visible ridges, and a complete irrigation system. Some even believe this was a state farm. It's a full demonstration of the ability to adapt to and transform nature. And farmers invented or improved stone tools to get the job done, including sickles, plows, and spades. The sickles used to look like the ones we use today, with one side flat and the other featuring a beveled edge. The beveled edge determined whether it was a left-handed tool or a right-handed one. Interestingly, 90% of the ones unearthed appear to be designed for left-handed use. This leaves historians wondering if many of the Liangzhu farmers were left-handers. The Liangzhu people also used stone plows. A spade or hoe requires a person to step back with each action. But a plow allows continuously pulling forward, saving time and motion. Paddy rice farming distinguished the Liangzhu culture from its contemporaries, whose staple food was crops such as wheat, barley, and millet. The Liangzhu people had a rich and varied diet. While they hunted wild animals such as deer, the Liangzhu people domesticated pigs. Pork was their most important source of meat. 80% of the memo bones unearthed at the ancient city site were pig bones. They also ate fish, snails, clams, and other food sourced from rivers. This bone hook is nearly impossible for a fish to escape from once it takes the bait. Melons, apricots, peaches, and jujubes were also on their menu. Farming advancements and abundant food freed some people from food gathering and production, laying the basis for a greater division of labor. These are some of the most intriguing artifacts we have from Liangzhu. Jade objects. Thousands have been excavated from tombs, including headpieces, necklaces, bracelets, and plaques. They were for ornaments. But their true significance lies in their use for rituals and ceremonies. The Liangzhu people invented toned cylinders and bead discs, two of the most important ritual jades that endured in later dynasties. With these objects, the shamans would lead religious ceremonies, speak to spirits, and pray for peace and abundance on altars made of earth and stone. This is the heaviest and most exquisite tone cylinder unearthed. It's dubbed the King of Tone, found in the mausoleum of a Liangzhu king. Five thin lines carved within a mere millimeter show the incredible craftsmanship. Yue axes are believed to indicate military power, and Li discs, wealth and social status. Jade objects excavated at the Liangzhu ruins do not simply reflect the sophistication of the society. The artistry and workmanship are hard to emulate, even with modern technology. For the past 30 years, 
Xiao'a Yu has been reproducing them to jade objects to promote the legacy. Zhao Ayu knows well the difficulty of working on jade for Liangzhu artisans who lacked his tools and technology. Jadeware, together with exquisite ivory and lacquer artifacts, was usually found in the nobles' burial sites. In the tombs of the ordinary people, it was usually pottery. From the numbers and types of funerary objects, archaeologists believe the Liangzhu culture had three classes, the ruling class, tribal chiefs, and craftsmen and farmers. Liangzhu pottery making was highly advanced for its time. Ceramicists harnessed the elements of clay and fire. Pots, pans, cookers, jars, artisans valued both utility and beauty, integrating function with form. There were also the finer things in life. This alcohol filter indicates that the rice wine enjoyed by the Liangzhu was a refined product. These pottery objects can tell us about life back then. But exactly what is not yet certain. A group of 12 inscriptions on a jar appears to show how they hunted a beast. The researchers cannot agree if it was a tiger or an alligator. Hundreds of such primitive written characters have been found on pottery and other objects. Archaeologists haven't yet decoded them, but they may offer a clue to the origin of the Chinese written characters. Each summer, monsoons bring ample rains, vital for growing rice. But this also meant a constant threat for the ancient Liangzhu people, floods. Their defense? A groundbreaking engineering marvel with 11 dams and levees erected in the mountains where the floods originated. The grass remnants offer a clue to the age of the structure. Carbon dating shows all 11 dams and levees were built about 5,000 years ago. Dams and levees were erected in the mountains where the floods originated. Together, they were capable of holding back nearly 46 million cubic meters of water, enough to fill more than 18,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools. Their dams and levees have been recognized as the world's largest and oldest known hydraulic engineering system. It required a mammoth amount of earth movement, something only possible in a sophisticated society. This intricate system served to irrigate rice crops while providing important transportation waterways. Both the scale and sophistication of the Liangzhu water control system were unmatched during its time, rivaling other civilizations, including ancient Egypt. Millennia later, 
Modern technology is helping preserve their rammed earth dams.我们是采用一个玻璃罩，对它一个封闭的一个恒温恒湿的一个管理。我们是精确设置了一个数字的预警预警值的。当里面的一个啊湿度啊低于百分之九十，温度高于二十二度的时候，那我们这边会自动开启
一方面，我们证明说中国五千年国家产生，那么再一个呢，就是说，确实是一个。我们东方地区的一个案例，文明它不是全世界都统一的，是吧？非洲也不一样，美洲也不一样，我们就是没有文字嘛，是吧？我们也没有金属，那么照样是我们可以证明国家组织不亚于埃及，应该是这样的一种认识。Yet the Liangzhu state disappeared after ruling the Yangtze floodplains for 1,000 years. Its people and culture flowed into the greater Chinese civilization. Following the World Heritage status, the Liangzhu Archaeological Park opened to the public, a showcase for the legacy and its protection. 关于国家考古遗址公园，它其实是整个那个考古遗址作为文化资源的一个保护、管理、利用过程中的一个重要环节。那么，中国的国家考古遗址公园呢，就应该讲中国的。历史上的这个有关文明和文化的一些重要的故事的。那么在公园的那个第一里呢，他也他也提出来要兼顾休闲，但这个兼顾休闲呢，我想也要强调一个前提，就是他要以这个历史环境的修复和保护为前提。Creating a cultural legacy of 25 square kilometers was a monumental task. Over a decade ago. The area was cluttered with villages, farmland, and factories. The stone quarries that provided wealth also posed significant risks to the site's safety. When the significance of ancient Liangzhu became clear, the government moved to preserve this cradle of Chinese civilization. In June 2009, construction began on the Liangzhu National Archaeological Park. It took more than a decade before the park was opened, with thousands of villagers resettled and a number of industrial parks relocated. Today, the restored ruins provide an ideal setting for flora and fauna. Uh, I also like to preserve the natural environment to respond to the plant material. On the human skin, because it can't be stored, the plant will destroy it. 其他凡是可以保留水稻的地方，我们都保留了水稻。Urban visitors can escape the daily hustle and bustle. The tranquility allows them to connect with the ancestors. 让他们在繁忙的这个工作节奏当中啊，能够在这么一大片非常优美的自然环境当中，能够得以一个呃放松。这在五千多年的这个土地上面啊，能感受这个文化的气息。Visitors can even try their hand at excavation. 提取对吗？可以给它稍微清理一下。好的，然后可以。呃，这边上可以。您觉得它是哪一个年代的一个碗？呃、这个的话，我我觉得可能可能是宋代的。哇、wow. 嗯。Look at that, a bowl from the Song Dynasty. This could open up a new window for the past. Despite all the excavations and findings, many questions are still unanswered, and more is waiting to be discovered. Excavation is a work in progress at Liangzhu and the surrounding areas. In 2023, archaeologists unearthed thousands more stone tools. There's even what is believed to be a stone tool-making workshop whose origin may predate Liangzhu. Archaeologists are also studying the beliefs and worship system. One particular motif, which appears repeatedly on the King of Jade stone and other jade objects, may offer some clues. 完整的神龟是一个啊，头戴羽冠的一个人的样子。那么这个就是一个王的形象。这个王可能他啊、呃、死掉之后啊，他就跟他们原来所信仰的神结合一体。这样的一种啊、呃、认知呢，这样的一种人类早期的观念呢。This deity might represent the supreme or possibly the only god worshipped by the Liangzhu people, indicating a unified belief system. Over the past four years, the park has welcomed more than five million domestic and international visitors. The establishment of the park has transformed the region nearby. 
and the Liangzhu legacy lives on, carried forward by the people of today. Turning the ruins of the ancient Liangzhu city into a national geological park is making a big difference to the small villages and towns nearby. Several kilometers east side of the park, a once underdeveloped rural area has now become one of the most popular sites in Hangzhou. Bookstores, coffee shops, and galleries. Architects have integrated elements from the Liangzhu culture into this commercial block, combining ancient motifs and modern design. Great changes have also taken place next door in Gangnam Village. Kang Hong Guo is a dedicated guardian of the Liangzhu relics. Back in 2006, jade artifacts were discovered when his home was being rebuilt. Together with his father, Kang turned in the jade pieces to the local government preventing their loss through theft and trafficking. Villager Yu Fameng runs a restaurant near the archaeological park. Yu has incorporated Liangzhu elements into his menu and the design of the restaurant, making it one of the region's most popular destinations for diners. And it's not just Yu. Symbols and icons from the ancient culture can be seen in almost every corner in today's Liangzhu. Liangzhu has left a rich legacy. Be it urban planning, jade culture, worshipping, Water conservancy engineering or rice cultivation. The ancient culture has held its place in the greater Chinese civilization throughout the millennia. Liang Ming manages more than 60 hectares of rice paddies inside the park. Each autumn, when rice fields shimmer like gold and their fragrance fills the air, Liangzhu Archaeological Park invites the public to the harvest. In reaping, threshing, and sun drying, parents and children can experience something of the ancient Liangzhu. Rice cultivation speaks about the past of the world's only continuous civilization. It'll also continue to tell the story of the Chinese people on this vast, magical land going into the future. Across the millennia, the Liangzhu civilization has left an indelible mark, and it will continue to serve as testament to China's five millennia of civilization.